Some truly stunning poll numbers for President Biden as Trump jumps ahead, scoring his biggest lead yet. NBC polls show President Biden is losing to Trump by five points. You see it there. And Biden is getting smoked in almost every major issue concerning American voters. On the border, Trump crushes Biden with a 35-point lead. Not surprised. Trump also leads Biden by more than 20 points on the economy. And Trump has ahead 21 points on dealing with crime. And there's more. Registered voters say they think Trump is twice as physically and mentally capable to serve as president over Biden. And recall the Biden campaign's trying to flip the script on that one. Doesn't appear to be working. Emily, the most alarming number for me, if I, and there's a lot of alarming numbers for Biden in this poll, but it's this one. And I had our team pull it out. So let's take a look at this. Biden, voters were asked, if you're a Biden voter, are you voting for Joe Biden or against Trump? What is animating your vote? 31% say for Joe Biden. As you see, 62% say they want Biden because they're voting against Trump. But you flip that, and among Trump voters, 57% say we're voting because we like Trump, whereas 35% say it's a vote against Joe Biden. I would rather be the guy whose base says, I support you. I'm coming for you. Rain or shine. That enthusiasm number would be worrying to me. Absolutely. And it's the kind of number that you can't manufacture, no matter what talking points you put out there. Um, the National Review, I thought, had an apt article today that said, succinctly, Joe Biden's getting smoked in every category. And the posit was, look, the Democrats would be insane not to put someone else in for him. And frankly, voters are begging that would happen. And they said all they're relying on, Democrats, is hoping that inflation keeps getting better. And then the lawfare war against Trump, hoping that he will be disqualified in some way and clearly supporting sort of a manufactured machine to do so. But what I noted was a reader comment that I thought was so fascinating. The reader comment that said, well, abortion, abortion, abortion. They said, when will the Republicans learn they can't just put their heads in the sand and pretend that the border or urban crime will be the biggest issue in November for everyone? They said on the Democrat campaign trail, the answer to every question will be abortion. Immigration, abortion. Crime, abortion. Inflation, abortion. White, progressive, college-educated suburban women are never giving up on their abortion. Look for lots to of talk about reproductive freedom, abortion care, and women's health. Freedom, care, and health, who would be against those things? Yeah, that's definitely their argument, as we've seen Kamala test out that messaging. Mm -hmm. But look at this, Molly. Also, the historical comparison with this enthusiasm number is interesting because the 31% who say, yeah, we're voting for Joe because we like Joe. Well, with Hillary, it was 49% who said, we're voting for Hillary because we like her. What happened to her? She lost the election. And then when you flip over to Obama, and it's a good comparison because he was an incumbent president, 72% said, we're voting for Obama because we like Obama. This is alarm bells. Right. It does seem like Trump has the much more positive message. If you care about the country, if you want the border taken care of, if you like having a good economy, if you want to not have a war breaking out all over the world, mm -hmm. then you vote for Trump. Whereas Biden has the more negative message of if you hate, if you're obsessed with hatred for one person, irrationally so, vote for me. And it just is a much harder uh, thing to do. But what's also interesting is four years ago, Joe Biden was the opposite. He was kind of the one where if you were like sad about how COVID was going or you thought everything was really chaotic and bad, you could vote for Joe Biden. And his promise was that he would be competent, that he would handle foreign policy brilliantly, that he would get the economy back on track. You know, he was a, he, he was this unknown figure. Well, now you've got four years where you judge how Joe Biden's presidency has gone. You judge what life was like under Donald Trump. And it's not a favorable comparison for Joe Biden. And we really haven't had anything like this since Grover Cleveland. You know, he won office mm -hmm. and then he lost office and then he won again by running against Benjamin Harrison. And people compared those two presidency and presidencies and chose Grover Cleveland. But, you know, that is something we don't encounter a lot where you can compare side by side. Yeah, and President Trump, everyone is fascinated by who his vice presidential pick will be. He gave us some clues. Watch. Mr. President, when will you announce who your VP is? Not for a while. I mean, I have, we have so many great people in the Republican Party, but not for a while. So people. you haven't decided who it is? I have a lot of good ideas, but I haven't. And there's no reason so to do that So you haven't told that person, you're my person? I, I speak to everybody. I speak to everybody. You know, I called Tim Scott this so because a lot of people like Tim Scott. I called him and I said, you are a much better candidate that, for me than you are for yourself. So maybe it's Tim Scott. 
Well, it could be, it could be a lot of people. Uh, Christy Noem has been incredible fighting for me. She said, I'd never run against him because I can't beat him. That was a very nice thing to say. He's keeping us guessing, Harris. Can we put that number back up on the big wall, that 62%? Because I think this plays into it. Mm -hmm. And I think that the abortion conversation is part of it. I, I personally would like to be the guy with the biggest number. Yes. So the biggest number is 62% of people who are voting for a certain candidate against the other guy. So people who didn't, who, who would rather vote against Trump than for Biden. That's the biggest number on the board. You got to get some of those people. Yes. And so who your vice president pick is could help you. You know you need women for all the reasons that Molly and, and Emily just laid out. So how do you get them? You know that it's somebody who's got to be able to talk about abortion that people will listen to. Maybe that's a Senator Tim Scott. Maybe that's a Nikki Haley. Like we don't, we don't really know. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a Governor DeSantis. I mean, he does have his pick. But that's the number I'm watching. I'm watching the biggest number on the board. And how do you get some of those people into the category where 57 percent say we want Trump? Can you get some of those 62 percent against him on his side? And I think you can because some of them are independents. That's very well said. And I think that's exactly right. When I'm looking at a VP, that's what I'd be looking at. Another name to add to that, that list, I would say, is Glenn Youngkin in Virginia. I saw his favorability numbers plus 24 percent. Biden in Virginia down 17 and Trump only behind in Virginia by three points. That's a guy who could potentially flip a state. In a state that's going to be a battleground and in a case where Glenn Youngkin won largely because he put the control of their of parents, children and schools back in the parents' hands. And that really strikes at the heart of what frustrates so many Americans across uh, the political spectrum. And, and I'll just add one last thing. Remember when David Axelrod said these polls are for real? Remember when, yeah. I don't know if it was Peter Ducey or another person asked the president a few months back, if you've seen the polls, he said, you're reading the wrong polls. <laughs> right. This is an NBC News poll, and they laid out that if you go all the way back to 2018, it's the worst head-to-head -head polling between Trump and Biden that they've had since then. <laughs> I think it's probably a wake-up call for Team Biden. Yeah, a lot of good VP picks for Trump, a lot of bad polls for Biden, so we'll begin with that. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.